Well, welcome back to the program today. We're continuing on in Revelation 17, which is very exciting. We have been talking about the woman who rides the beast. There's a very good book by a, a man called Dave Hunt, and you can download that book on, um, I'm trying to remember which one of the, you can download it anyway. It's called The Woman Rides the Beast. And it's brilliant, really talking about the woman riding the beast. Certainly, he brings in strongly the Catholic Church into it. And I don't want to offend anyone that's Catholic that's watching, but certainly the history of the Catholic Church um, is pretty interesting, that papal system, that's for sure. But so we, we're looking in here today, and before we go any further, I would love you to subscribe and hit the, the, the little bell. And if you enjoy what we're sharing today, please like it and please leave us some comments. We love comments. They're, they're marvellous. So as we've shared, I'm just going to read again a few verses here. One of the seven angels who had had the seven bowls, we've been talking about the seven bowls of the wrath of God that were poured out. It says, come and I will show you the judgment of the great harlot who sits on many waters. And then it describes her as a prostitute, promiscuous, with universal influence, seated and seemingly steering the beast for a period of time, dressed in purple and scarlet, verse 4, a cup of abominations, wealthy, rich, because of the abominations involved with the kingdoms of the earth, and so on, and she has on her forehead a name, Mystery Babylon, the great, the mother of harlots, and the abominations of the earth. And we also read in verse 6, that she has drunk the blood of a great number of martyrs. If you want to check this out, go back and check out our previous teaching on this subject on the woman that rides the beast. But now we're going to go a little further and get an understanding of what's going on here. You, I'm, I'm hoping you're working with me on it. It says, And the angel said to me, Why did you marvel, John? John marveled with great amazement. Maybe he marveled that a Christian system had carried out massive martyrdoms. And that is what has happened. That's what's taken place during the Inquisitions. Massive numbers murdered. Massive. The angel said to me, why did you marvel? I will tell you the mystery of the woman and of the beast that carries her, which has the seven heads and ten horns. I'm going to read this down to verse 12, then I'm going to take you to Daniel, then I'll, try, then I'll endeavour to explain what's going on here. The beast which you saw talks about the seven heads and ten horns. The beast which you saw was and is not, was and is not, and will ascend out of the bottomless pit and go to perdition. That's an interesting piece. Okay, and those who dwell on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the book of life from the foundation of the world when they see the beast that was and is not and yet is. Was, is not, and yet is. Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Mountains speak of power. We're going to read that back in the book of Daniel. The mountains on which the woman sits. Some people say these are seven hills of Rome. Certainly the judgment of this, this woman is, and I didn't say this, God did, the woman whom you saw is that great city which reigns over the kings of the earth. And what is the city that when John was writing this is ruling over the kings of the earth? And that was Rome. And so... The Bible says there's seven kings. Five have fallen, one is, and the other has not yet come. When he comes, he must continue a short time. The beast, the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. So there's seven kingdoms and there's going to be one more. And is of the seven, and he is going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings who have received no kingdom as yet, but they receive authority from the beast. They are of one mind and they will give the, their power and their authority to the beast. 
And so I'm just going to go back here, and I want you to just go back in your Bible with me, please, to the book of Daniel. And I'm just going to go back to Daniel chapter 2, and I haven't got time to open this up in a whole lot of details. I love the book of Daniel. It's one of my very favorite books in the Bible. But we're going back to Daniel, the second chapter, to a dream that firstly was had by Nebuchadnezzar. Then we're going to find that there's more to this in Daniel and chapter 7. But I'm particularly interested in Daniel chapter 2. If you go back there, we read at the start that King Nebuchadnezzar of Babylon, we know that Daniel was in Babylon in captivity when this vision was given. Nebuchadnezzar had a dream. And in that dream, he was so troubled, he didn't know what to do with this dream. And he basically said, you've got to tell me what the dream is. And he actually challenged the guys and said, if you can't interpret it, you're not magicians, you'll probably get killed. And they were facing death. For, they had to give him the dream and the interpretation. We know that there was the young man, Daniel, who was a prophet, mightily raised up. He had the dream and he came to the king. And the king said, okay, what is it? What is it? The astrologers couldn't do it. The magicians of Babylon couldn't do it. All the witchcraft and all the everything there, the astrology and everything else couldn't help. And so here's Daniel's interpretation. He says, oh, king, you're watching. And behold, there was a great image. Now, you're seeing that great image now on your screen. It was a great image, an image of a figure that was broken up into the following parts. It was broken up, firstly, with a head made of gold. Then it had a chest made of silver. The loins were made of bronze. The legs were made of iron. And then finally, the feet were still iron, but now these are mixed with clay. And so you have these, you have firstly... The gold, the silver, the bronze, the iron, and the mixture of iron and clay. You've got five kingdoms here. And so these five kingdoms are spoken and Daniel says, hey, the first one's you, Babylon. So the gold is Babylon. The next one's a lesser kingdom. The third one is a kingdom that will rule the earth. That, that is going to be Alexander the Great. The fourth one is exceeding fierce. And he actually, if you have a look now, and I'm not going to go into all the details, but here we have the four beasts that were also shown to him later. And uh, the beasts are the eagle, sorry, the, the lion, the bear, the leopard, and the exceeding fierce beast. Lion, bear, huge bear with ripping feet with three uh, ribs in its mouth, the leopard representing Alexander the Great with great speed, with wings, speed, and we know of the leopard that the leopard is extremely cunning. And then a beast that was a ripping, tearing beast, more savage than the rest, and that beast will cover the last two kingdoms, the fourth kingdom and the one at the end of the age. Now, as we look at this particular image up here, and we see the beasts there, we understand that he is speaking about, number one, Babylon, number two, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and then this mixture, this Roman Empire at the end of days that we are a mixture of iron and clay. And the scripture says there came a stone and a, a stone came down the stone that the builders rejected came and hit the feet, struck the feet, and everything of all of these kingdoms came crumbling down. The last kingdom was shattered, and all the rest, the gold, the silver, they all just melted, all the remnants of the, the great empires of history and all their might and everything else all just collapsed in a great heap as the stone that the builders rejected, this stone not made with hands, strikes the image and the image is crushed and the mighty kingdom of God is ushered in with that, this very last great event uh, of the age as Jesus comes back to rule and reign, Jesus the stone. This is right there 
laying the foundation for us to understand Revelation um, and chapter 17. So let's, let's now piece this together. In your own time, you can have a look at, at uh, chapter 2 and chapter 7 of the book of Daniel. I would encourage you, if you go into chapter 8, it'll give you this mighty history of Alexander the Great. You'll have some of the most extremely brilliant prophetic stuff given in Daniel that you'll ever read. It's interesting, at the end of Daniel, it says, close the book, Daniel, because it's going to be closed until the last times, the end times, when knowledge is greatly influenced by travel. Very, very interesting book, the book of Daniel, which seemingly has been closed to be understood at the end of the age. Anyway, that's another thing for you to, and somewhere down the line, we may open up the book of Daniel and just fully um, bring it into place. And so the scripture does speak of this beast in Daniel having seven heads and the ten horns, ten horns. And it will describe in, in the book of Daniel how these ten horns will be ten nations and out of them will come eleven another horn, a little horn who will rise up. He'll rise up above all these others and he will speak great words of blasphemy. He will rise up and he really, the eleventh horn, will rise up and he will be the Antichrist and he will then step in to ruling in the nations. And then it goes on here and it says in verse 8, the beast that you saw was, who was he? What the heck is being spoken of here? He was, this beast. Now, this, this particular beast that we saw was, is not, but currently is locked up in the Abuso. Is this the controlling demonic power that controlled these guys, the force that was behind Alexander the Great, making him invincible? Was this the demon power that caused the Assyrian Empire to rule with such force? Was it the ruling power? But certainly it says he was, this force, this power, the satanic power, the satanic demon. We know that the power that Antichrist will have will come from Satan. Who is this particular spirit? I think this spirit is going to have great control. He's locked away. He's unsafe right now on the earth. He's got no place on the earth right now. He's locked in the abuso. He will be released to have great control. But we do know that Satan is going to give control to the Antichrist, who's going to be totally possessed, probably by a spirit, and ultimately by Satan himself. I don't know. You can work that through yourself. We just know that he was, he is not, he will ascend supernaturally out of the place where he is now, the bottomless pit or the abuso, and we know that he's going to go into ultimately into perdition. And those on the earth will marvel whose names are not written in the Lamb's Book of Life and so on. And verse 9 says... Here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains. Seven mountains. Who are the seven mountains? Well, I think if we look at the seven mountains, they are seven distinct empires that have risen. And I think it becomes clear as we go. From the time of Daniel, when Daniel wrote, he wrote and there was Babylon, Medo-Persia, Greece, Rome, and he speaks of the revised Roman Empire. That's five. But the nations, the great empires that confronted Israel were firstly Egypt, followed by Assyria, because we know the northern tribes were taken in there. These are the groups that were involved with the nation of Israel. Firstly, Egypt. Secondly, Assyria. The third of these mountains is Babylon. The fourth is Medo-Persia. The fifth is Greece, the sixth is Rome, and the seventh is the revised Roman Empire. Okay, so the scripture goes here and says, uh, the seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. 
She has been involved right back there with false religion, with idolatry, with everything evil you could imagine. Every one of these empires was ruled by the satanic and the Babylonic. doesn't matter which one it was. If you go to the Assyrians, if you look at the art of Assyria, you look at the art of Egypt, if you look at, at Egypt today, and I just saw a clip with Katy Perry doing a thing and she was covered with the all-seeing, had the all-seeing eye of Horus and, and all the stuff was being displayed there uh, of Egypt and we're seeing all of this Babylonic stuff coming back into music today. It's coming back into uh, the theatre. It's coming back into movies. It's coming back into every area. And every one of these seven nations were driven by demonic powers. For example, Alexander the Great, he considered that he was a god, the son of Zeus, the son of Zeus Ammon. And he considered that he had been raised up. In fact, he was led to believe that his mother had been impregnated by Zeus and her fa the father was terrified to go near his mother from a long period there because of the strange events and the dreams he had of a lion guarding her womb and so on. And we read of Alexander that he was steeped in the mysticism and the gods and had been raised studying the gods and everything that flowed from Babylon and every great empire that's been risen whether it's even lesser empires not included in these seven, like Adolf Hitler's attempt for world dominance between 1939 and 1945, was totally driven by occultic force and the Norse gods. And all of that goes right back to Babylon. And so the woman has ridden the seven mountains from the beginning. In all their conquests, she's ridden the mountains. She's ridden each of these nations and as they have gone under the satanic power of, um, of hell to touch and change the world. But now it goes on here and it says, here is the mind which has wisdom. The seven heads are seven mountains on which the woman sits. There are seven kings. Five have fallen. That's true. When John was writing this, five of them have gone down. Egypt, Assyria, Babylon, Persia and Greece have all gone down. Greece was totally swallowed up by Rome. Um, Greece swallowed up the previous and so on. Each one has swallowed the previous one. And so five have gone down. One is, which is Rome. But then there's another one described here, uh, the seventh, which is a revised Roman Empire at the end of the age. And so we have now the, the next one that is coming, the seventh, is the feet of clay and iron mixed together, an unusual and quite strange mix. And the Bible goes here, and again, uh, it goes further, and it says, uh, the seven kings, five have fallen, one is, the other has yet to come, but when he comes, he will continue a short time. This is the reign of Antichrist. He is the 11th horn, if you like, but we're going to see these 10. And then it repeats again, the beast that was and is not is himself also the eighth. And so the one that's coming out of the bottomless pit has been, he is coming, he was, he's not right now because he's in the bottomless pit, but he is going to rise up to be the controlling demonic force who is going to be behind this eighth kingdom, which is the kingdom of Antichrist, and he's of the seven, so he's one of the seven. He's come out of the seven, but he's going to perdition. So we know that he's coming out of one of the ancient empires. Interesting that on certain occasions, he is described as the Assyrian. And the uh, Assyrian Empire was swallowed up by the Roman Empire, was part of the Roman Empire. Everything there was. And so he's coming out. We don't know exactly who. He actually is, but he's going to perdition. The ten horns which you saw are ten kings, ten groups, ten kingdoms on the earth. These ten kingdoms, we don't know who they are. We don't know which nations they are or kingdoms or groups, whether the world's divided up into ten parts. 
we don't really know. But these 10 kings or 10 kingdoms are going to give their power to the Antichrist. They're going to say, we're behind you. Doesn't mean the whole earth at that point is, but certainly in the beginning, 10 kingdoms will say, all of our power, maybe 10 nations, everything we've got is yours, Antichrist. And uh, it's believed that it is going to be, he's going to rise up out of the old Roman Empire. And we can establish that going back to Daniel and uh, Daniel chapter 9, right down there in verses 26, 27 there, it talks about the fact, and the prince uh, or the people of the prince who shall come will destroy the city of Jerusalem. And it is a prophetic word of the Roman destruction of Jerusalem in 70 AD, but the Antichrist is called the prince or, or the prince of that particular group of people, which is the old Roman Empire. So it's certain that he's coming out of the old Roman Empire and certainly out of a, a group of 10 nations that are firstly going to embrace him. And so the Bible says these are of one mind and they will give their power and their authority to the beast. They're all united and they're all saying, rise up, take authority, take world rulership. And these will make war with the lamb. They'll fight the lamb and the lamb will overcome them. Why? Because he is the Lord of lords, the king of kings. Those who are with him are called chosen and faithful. These are actually going to turn on the Lamb of God, but he will overcome them. The scripture says, Then he said to me, The waters which you saw where the harlot sits, their peoples, multitudes, nation and tongues, and the ten horns which you saw on the beast, these will actually turn on the harlot. They're going to turn on the harlot. When's that going to be? When is that going to be? They're going to turn on her. They're going to turn on the whole thing. Will that be at the time when Antichrist himself says, I'm not acknowledging any gods or any religions. I am God. I have to be worshipped. I'm not sure. But we do know that she will turn on the harlot, on this religious system. Maybe it's going to be a one world religious system. We certainly know that uh, and we've read of the false prophet and the false prophet who pushing a one world system. The false prophet is very involved with the Antichrist. Interesting. The Bible says they're going to make her desolate. They're going to destroy her. For God has put into their hearts to fulfill his purpose, to be of one mind, to give their kingdom to the beast until the words of God are fulfilled. And the woman which you saw is that great city which, as John says, currently reigns over the kings of the earth which is Rome. It's an interesting piece of scripture. Go through in your own time. Have a good look at it. Love your comments. Love your thoughts. You may agree with where I come from. Uh, not everybody does. Um, I would encourage you to read the book of Daniel in your own time. Get a good, solid commentary. I'm particularly interested somewhere down the line to, to do the same thing as I'm doing here now with Revelation and do it with the book of Daniel. I've lectured Daniel all across the earth and uh, I love the book dearly. I hope you've enjoyed this today and I hope it's stirring you. The beautiful part is that Jesus is in, in control and he certainly makes it very clear just in a nice little quiet way that these 10 who've made up their mind are going to get crushed by the lamb. They're going to fight the lamb and they are going to get smashed. The Asians at age the Nations of the earth are rising up against him, but pity help those that stand against him in the great day. Thank God we're walking with him now. If you don't know Jesus now, now's the time to get to know him before things turn deadly serious. Thanks for tuning in. God bless you. Make sure you're living for Christ. If you don't know him, there's a simple prayer to pray. Maybe you'd like to pray it with me right now. Dear Heavenly Father, I believe that Jesus Christ is the Son of the living God. 
that he died on a Roman cross to cleanse me from every sin that I've ever committed. Jesus, come into my heart today, I pray. Make me new. Cleanse me from all unrighteousness. I give you my life in Jesus' name. Amen. Thank you again. Don't forget to hit the button. Don't forget to subscribe. Hit the button. Hit a like. Give us a comment. Love you today. God bless you.